This computer is eight years old and only cost about $50 on eBay. What if I told you we can add an eight core processor for only 25 bucks, DDR4 RAM, an NVMe SSD hard drive, and a moderate budget GPU? Happy birthday. This is the HP Z440. I bought this PC for a little over $50, and as you can see, that's not extremely unusual, judging by the multiple others that were sold. This was practically a bare-bones type of deal, meaning no RAM, no hard drive, and all that type of good stuff. It did come with a processor, which really wasn't good at all, but one of the things I like about this PC is that there are a number of cheap upgrades available in terms of the CPU. There was also a crummy GPU that I'm not going to use and that if I were to sell it I could maybe get 10 bucks out of, but it's not what came with this computer that makes it a good deal. It's the potential for really cheap but significant upgrades. If you like to do hardware projects but you're on a strict, like, serious budget, modifying an older PC is always a solid option and something that I personally really enjoy doing. So keep in mind, this isn't a $500 or $600 computer where we're going to be running the newest games at 16,000K high def. It, the quality is so good, I don't even know it's real anymore! But for roughly $250 to $300 total, we will be able to turn this machine into a perfectly functional PC capable of some mid-range gaming that might surprise you. So without further ado, it's exactly how that is supposed to be pronounced. We're going to get into some modifications and upgrades. Which in turn means we're going to get into some chair desk. As promised, the HP Z440 in the chair desk model 925Y41. It doesn't need a model number, it's a chair desk. As you can see, it isn't anything crazy on the outside, except for very scratched up, but that's all right. Nothing special, but as I said, it's the potential for upgrades that makes this computer pretty cool. And here is the main attraction, and I'm talking, of course, about chair desk. What do you think I meant this? Think I meant this thing? All right, so we're going to be swapping out the CPU. I've already updated the BIOS, and in order to do that, I had to install the RAM first. So we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4-2133 RAM, and the RAM isn't terribly expensive. I paid, it was probably for 32 gigabytes, it was around $12 per eight gigabyte stick. So we paid around $50 for the RAM. I have a 2.5 inch SSD. Again, I had to just install something in order to update the BIOS. But even though there isn't an M2 slot on the board, we actually have a device which will enable us to boot from an NVMe hard drive. And that device is this little monster. This is an HPZ turbo drive. And as you can see, it is essentially an adapter that you plug into a PCIe port. And right here on this little board, it holds an NVMe hard drive. So again, even though there's not an M2 slot on the board, Board, we can still boot from NVMe and run our operating system and core applications from a faster SSD. Now the first modification we're going to make is a little disappointing because I was hoping we wouldn't have to do this, but essentially this model of Z440 came with two variations. The main difference between the two is the power supply. One comes with what we have here, which is a 525 watt power supply. Now that's really not bad, the problem is that it has no G GPU connectors. So if we were to keep this power supply, we would be more limited in terms of GPU upgrades. So what I did was buy a power supply, still from this model, but from the other variation, that has two six-pin GPU connectors. Now this is a 700 watt power supply, and it's, it fits the sort of proprietary form factor of the power supply because again, this came from a Z440. So that is disappointing because obviously that's an additional cost. I was lucky enough to find this PSU for I think around $35. I'm pretty confident that I can sell the old 525 watt power supply for around $20. So overall it's not that big of a hit in terms of price, especially for what we'll be getting out of it. 
All right, with our power supply switched, let's clear out these old expansion cards to make way for our NVMe PCIe adapter and our new GPU. These are actually a pretty interesting expansion here. Um, if you're not familiar, that's actually a GNOME seatbelt. So GNOMEs also have to wear seatbelts when they're driving computers. I'm trying to get this bay open here. Just push these two things down, they should pop up and then this should move. But they're just stuck here. This one's really jammed in there. What is happening? I'm two seconds away from getting a hammer and just fucking beating this open. This is the culprit right here. It's like jammed. It's coming out one way or the other. There it goes. Professionalism. I think the gnomes are mad that I'm taking their seat belts. Now this little GPU, it's not like completely worthless, but maybe I'll, I might throw it in one of the computers that I sell. It's very good for collecting dust, apparently. If that's a feature you're looking for in a PC. All right, now that this is open and we have some case spaciousness, let's go ahead and swap out the CPU. It wouldn't be a CPU fan unscrewing if I didn't let you know. All right, removing the old CPU. Now for the new CPU, I've selected this. This is the Xeon E5 2667V3. This processor has eight cores, 16 threads, 3.2 gigahertz base clock rate, and a 3.6 gigahertz turbo boost. I got this on eBay for $25, and you can find them very commonly for around that price. So this is a really good, inexpensive upgrade for our machine. Would be even better if I didn't run out of thermal paste. I do have one of these little packets that came with uh, another fan. So I think between this and the paste that's left over from the fan we just removed, we'll probably have enough. We'll see what happens. So I dropped our crummy GPU back inside and just did a quick hardware test of everything we've installed so far, and everything is running properly. So I think we're ready to move on to our last two upgrades, which are the NVMe SSD and a GPU. So our NVMe SSD will be simple enough. We're just going to plug it in down here out of the way because we do have a dual port graphics card. And now for the main event, our GPU, which now that upon closer inspection looks like somebody spilled something on it. I guess this is a learning moment. If a deal looks too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. This is the GTX 1070, and in future builds I'll probably try a cheaper graphics card. This cost uh, a little over a hundred bucks. You're more often going to find these for like 130, 140, the 1070s. I guess you get a discount if somebody spills a bunch of sticky shit all over it. There we go. All right. Will it fit? Will it work, though, is the question. Now, our next issue here, which we should be fine, but this power supply only has these two six-pin connectors, but the 1070 runs in uh, an eight-pin connector or a six plus two or whatever to be technical. Now, that could be an issue, but theoretically speaking, even though it's generally frowned upon to use any kind of converters or adapters, we should be fine using a dual six pin to eight pin. So we'll go ahead and throw this adapter on and connect our GPU. All right, here's our two six pins to eight pin. We're gonna connect this. 
So we'll get everything set up and then hopefully be able to do some testing if we can successfully install Windows and get everything moving. Apparently that fluid on the GPU was rocket fuel because we're flying through the install process. So everything's at least functioning well from the hardware standpoint. So we have Windows installed successfully and now I'm installing the drivers for the graphics card. Then I'll download a couple games and we'll do some general just sort of basic testing to see how this would do in regards to things things like mid-range gaming. All right, I think we have everything set up, so we'll run a couple games and see how far we can push this thing performance-wise. All right, we're starting with Devil May Cry 5. This game's about two years old. We are running at 1080p with the highest in-game graphical settings, and so far it's running a really consistent 144 frames per second. Really early on, I saw a couple dips, as it, but as it picked up speed and as we've been moving along, I. I I'm not seeing any dips in that frame rate so far. It is looking like a consistent 144. That is pretty awesome. Man, I, I am liking this so far. Next up is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This is another 2019 game, but more demanding than Devil May Cry 5. This game, we are also running the highest in-game graphical settings at 1080p. And we're not seeing the same kind of frame rate here as it is more challenging for our hardware, but we're still getting really decent gameplay and it's hanging between 80 and 90 frames per second, closer to 90 on average and you might not be able to tell as I'm recording the screen directly but both of these games look really clear and just really smooth and nice this is definitely a solid option for some mid-range gaming. I'm becoming borderline obsessed with these computers as once again the Z440 proves itself to be an excellent budget machine. So thank you once again for watching the video. I really appreciate everyone who's been tuning in. And that is all for now. Catch you later.